Hey folks, this week's episode is going to look a little bit different than certainly some of my other episodes have, and that's because I'm down here with the Nats outside of Columbus, Georgia, teaching in a law enforcement seminar, and I'm teaching tactical visual tracking and some other skills that help make officers better and more efficient in the woods. And that topic got me thinking, what made an 18th century scout, spy, or frontiersman good? What were their definitions for uh, what, what made them legendary? What skills did they need to, to sort of become that legendary status? And how do we view that through our lens in the 20th century today? So stay with me. This week on the Deerskin Dyer, we're talking about the 18th century frontier skills and why they're notable. I had a mentor one time that told me that a true professional was someone who knew their craft so well they knew what they could get away with. And in studying the 18th century, you know, frontiersman, scouter, spy, or long hunter, I, I began to look at it through that lens and I realized that it wasn't just about knowing the hard skills like tracking, the hard skills like um, uh, which tree bark would be good for building which shelter. Um, it was knowing how and when to apply those and applying them at the right time with really no excess. And uh, it, it really helped me understand better how I could better myself in terms of replicating what, what these men were able to do and trying to get that little taste of history back in the 21st century. For me personally, my entire perspective changed when I realized that I was chasing material culture because in my mind, if I made this, this piece of clothing, like, like a pair of moccasins, for example, as perfectly as I could, somehow that would translate into uh, my experience being that much more fulfilling or rich. And what I really understood later was, well, that is true, right? I want my, my material culture items to be as authentic as possible. Um, I wasn't spending a whole lot of time learning the actual skills that they would have known, and more importantly, learning how to apply them. I had a mentor one time that told me that a true professional knows what they can get away with. And that really changed my perspective on 18th century uh, research. Um, so I was spending a lot of time making sure I had the perfectly made tomahawk. Not a lot of time spent on how and when it might have been used. And, and am I able to, to replicate that um, and, and, and just get that much closer to an 18th century experience? There are a number of tangible skills that help us portray a frontier scout or spy a lot better, but it's really the application of those hard skills that, that separate um, the, the novice from the professional. And that's something that can't be trained. It's something that almost has to become innate. And that innate... So today we certainly value skills like marksmanship and land navigation, uh, first aid, um, camouflage and concealment. Those are all extremely important um, skill sets that we, uh, when we see someone who does those well, we assume them to be uh, what we might call today good in the woods. But I think in the 18th century, things were just a little bit different. All of those, all of those key words are important, but they're important for slightly different reasons. For example, camouflage isn't like this type of camouflage in the 18th century. It's not blending in with your environment uh, to match color schemes. Sometimes it's dressing up like someone else to, to remain deceptive for that much longer to the naked eye at a distance. Marksmanship, well, we know they practiced, uh, we know they, they practiced with their firearms. But were they good because they had rifles or were they good with the rifles that they had, right? And I think you see a mixture of both of those. Then you see other things like land navigation. Well, today we think of land navigation with a compass and following, let's say, a bearing over a certain distance and being able to measure that distance, maybe even with a GPS unit. But I think at the time, they valued the knowledge of the landscape. They, they valued the knowledge that the landscape would play the people and the people would play the landscape. So they would know the confluences of two rivers, for example. They would know prominent peaks or valleys or ridgelines. And they would know how those prominent peaks, valleys, ridgelines, and, and, and riverways would affect 
people's movement through that particular area. So for example, I might be able to go to the confluences of two rivers knowing that river travel is going to have to pass that way. And if I want to find out what's happened there, that's a good place to start. So knowledge of the terrain and knowledge of how the terrain played the people and played the movement patterns by the people affected uh, a frontiersman's ability to go into an area and take this big, broad, vast location and narrow it down to exactly what they knew they needed to look at. Is that here on Captain back there? The guard there? is a mohawk. No mohawk is here on. A good 18th century scout or spy or frontiersman would also have known the various uh, personalities that were in that area and how they affected um, things like settler migration patterns or um, patterns of warfare, for example. So it's not just knowing what kind of trees there are. It's not just knowing how to shoot your rifle really good. It's also understanding how all of the cultural dynamics played into one another and what that would mean depending on what you'd been asked to do. All right, so let's say that you portray an 18th century scout, spy, or frontiersman, and there, you, you want to be able to up your game. You want to be able to, to, to experience a little bit more of what they probably experienced. Um, based on what I've read, here's what I'll tell you that, that I think you should do. Um, you should learn the environment that you're around inside and out. What made the legendary scouts, spies, and frontiersmen legendary was their intense and innate knowledge of the environment that they lived and worked in and when things didn't belong. And when things didn't belong, they could exploit that, they could see it, they could see it before anyone else saw it, and they could make decisions long-term down the road based on what they observed. So there you go, folks. This one was a little down and dirty this week. I apologize for the noise in the background and the less than perfect video quality, but I had some thoughts in my head that I thought may help somebody else, and I wanted to get the information out there for you. Um, if you like this video, please click like and subscribe, and we will see you next time on The Deerskin Diary. Oh.